What is up, everyone? Old Willow Scrub here. Finally getting this going. Uh, nothing like creating this book that you see at the last freaking possible minute, because I, because I'm a slacker. Yeah, Bacon. That song came from uh, Chrono Cross. That is the on the third disc on the soundtrack. Uh, Radical Dreamers. Subicoden. I haven't played Chrono Cross in so long. I f I forgot how to play it. Really, I should I should play it someday. It's been a while. Great game. Okay, we are back with the second episode of uh, Cold Decept Revolt book guides. This book is a little different. The last episode, it was a Kelpie GP farming book. It's a little more advanced than what you would be able to do early. That book, you basically have to unlock all of the booster packs just to get to it. Okay, it's, it's a lot of farming. It's a lot of cards that you're really not going to get early. This book, however, is an early book. Oh wait, let me get the sound going. And I somehow lost 126 frames <laughs> from just unmuting the sound. Rip those frames. So this book is a little different. This book is a beginner book. And I'm okay. I'm I'm just watching my internet speed for some reason drop on OBS. It's like green, then yellow, then red. One second, let me try to fix this. Are we good now, computer? I, I think we're good now. I hope so. I dropped a total of 184 frames in about 30 seconds. Didn't do that last time, but maybe it's just um, audio or uh, just a quick little glitch. Raise this ever so slightly. Okay, so I think I have everything under control. Okay, so as I was saying, the last book was a Kelpie uh, GP farming book. It's kind of hard to get off, and people might want to know what are some good beginner books? According to Google Translate, this book is called Beginner Fire Support. Uh, its actual title is Beginner Magma Support, or it's Beginner Fire Aid, Google Translate Edition. It's called Beginner Magma Support. This is a pretty interesting red-green support book. This splashes in some neutral, and we're gonna get through that, but 
why it's beginner is when you play online, there's a couple different like ranked floors, if you will. And one of the floors you can do is beginner. You can't in beginner you can't do beginner if your rank is too high. You can't play beginner with Evo cards, and you can't play with beginner with cards that require or that are from other blocks other than the first two or three. I think it's starter and then uh, in the darkness or in darkness. I want to say it's it's starter, drifter, and in darkness. Those are the only three blocks. The other blocks are city of salvation and sleeping gods. You can't use those last two. So this is for all intents and purposes, a beginner book that you can use. And you can use this quick because these cards come from the first three set, or the first three blocks. So it's really easy to get them. If you want to know block information, you can go to coltsfcentral.com. You can get to it from the panel below the stream. I think the first two or three blocks are now up there, or what those blocks contain. I created a list for each individual one, sent them to the owner, and he put in, I think, the first two, maybe the third one. So soon they'll have a breakdown of, of every card block, so if you wanted to know what cards are in what blocks, you can. But let us look at this book. No, not a new one. This is called, like I said, Beginner Magma Support. Uh, magma is a Fire Earth card, and it's a Fire Earth book. So the first card we have is Bandit. Bandit is an unusual support creature. Not only can you use... So support creatures mean you can use creature cards as an item. So I could put... Um, Bal Al on Bandit. And whatever the Bal Al's strength and HP are is what will add to Bandit's. But Bandit has another ability where he steals magic from an opponent based on how much damage you do to the opponent. So the higher Bandit's HP, or the higher Bandit's strength, the more HP or the more mana you're going to steal. He's a great support card. Next we have Shadowgeist. Uh, Shadowgeist is a pretty decent creature. It attacks first and it's vigorous. In Cold of Seth Revolt, creatures or they have a fatigue system where if you put a creature down that doesn't have vigorous, if you've ever played Magic the Gathering, that's kind of like the creature uh, in tapped position where it can't do anything. And then when you make a full lap, or you land on a gate, you un basically you untap or stand up to creatures. Vigorous basically means that that creature will never stand down. And this one has a pretty decent ability. It has an attack bonus where opponent's strength equals zero. Uh, this can be useful for a couple scenarios, most likely if you have Lunatic Hair. And Lunatic Hair is a creature where, at the end of battle, you swap opponents' strength and HP. So you could attack someone with Shadowgeist on one turn, and then Lunatic Hair them again, if they never replaced the creature or gave it a more base strength, and then kill it with the Lunatic Hair combo. It, it does take a lot to set it up, but it's a pretty decent card. There are ways around it, so you have to be prepared for that. There are many ways to beat Shadowgeist. It's, it's good, but it's not great. Next card we have is Steam Gear. Steam Gear um, claims half the standard toll value. Yeah. It's not that good, it's not that bad. I mean, 
if the, if it was maxed out on the land and it was 2800 was the toll fee you'd only get 1400 um, ideally though you'd probably want to use steam gear with bandit because that would make bandit a 70 70 creature so you would attack for 70 most likely kill their creature steal 140 magic at the same time um, oh wait first let me let me not forget because I'm an idiot before we go on, I want to say thank you to Hell's Attack, Try Optical, and um, Zalmute for the follows. I wanted to want to make sure I didn't forget that. There's so much to discuss with this book. I'm like, no, stop, don't forget. Okay, so the next creature we have is Trojan Horse. Uh, Trojan Horse has two abilities. First, it has Support All. Support All means you can use any creature type. Uh, some supports have changed. It used to just be Support, and then you can use any creature. Now they changed where some creatures you can only use um, Neutral, Fire, or Earth, or Fire and Earth creatures only. And some have Support All. But... Trojan Horse also has Penetrate All. So, for instance, you could put, you know, the Bal Al with its, um... Okay, why am I dropping frames so badly? And I know that's internet. This ain't looking good. What the hell? Okay, but yeah, you can put Bal Al on uh, on Trojan Horse, and Bal Al will, will give it 50 strength, and that 50 is going to penetrate. And what penetrate does is penetrate like scrolls, ignore the land bonus. You have to think of the land bonus, and I posted this on Reddit and on Game FAQs. It's essentially a buffer zone. HP from the land bonus does not get added to your creature. It's literally just think of it like a buffer zone that takes damage first before all other damage goes to your creature. And penetrate and scrolls literally ignore that buffer zone and go straight to your creature. So if your creature only has 50 short or 50 HP, then Trojan Horse with Bal Al on it would insta-kill your creature. Okay, you can get a, you can get around that if you add HP to your creature in battle. But if you don't have an armor to either add HP or reflect, ain't looking so good. Next we have Bal Al. Um, in my opinion, not really that great for putting down. You have to have a fire land already, and you have to discard a card. And at the end of battle, you destroy a random card from the user's hand. Your hand. Again, like Steam Gear, I would use it for support fodder. Put it on Trojan Horse, put it on Bandit. Okay, next creature we have is Death Scythe actually a really decent creature. Death Scythe, you do have to discard a card to play it, but it's a 70-10. It's what you would call a glass cannon. It can do a lot of damage, but its HP is bad. Now here's the thing. It also has a secret artwork and it can evolve into mummy. So that's also not too bad. I mean, you can get another pretty decent green creature out if Death Scythe is in play and hasn't died. Which it probably will. But, look at its strength, 70 strength. Put that on something like Bandit, who now hits for 90. As soon as Bandit hits, he's stealing 180 magic. Right off the bat. Before he does... So... He's going to do 90 damage, he's going to steal 180 magic, and then, more than likely, the creature's going to be dead and you get to land. 
Okay. You can use Death Scythe as either a, a solitary glass cannon attacker or slap him into bandit. Next creature we have is Firebeak. This creature is hated by a lot of people when it goes against it. Firebeak attacks first and it critical hits water and air creatures. And it penetrates water and air. Meaning, if there is a water... Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, I yawned. But it's also going to penetrate the water and air. On top of critical hitting. Like, ouch. This is no joke, this thing hurts. Okay, it attacks first, it has 50 strength, it's gonna critical hit water or air, so that's 75, without using a weapon. Right? And then, it's going to uh, penetrate on top of that. This thing is powerful against water and air creatures. Next creature we have is King Varon. In my opinion, one of the greatest creatures for a fire book for holding lands. I use this um, in a in a beginner old willow slash kelpie book I have. This thing is 60 strength 50 HP. So on a level 1 fire land it has 60 HP. Okay, it's a ton of HP and a ton of strength. If you have something in here and I do, and there is, and we're gonna get to that. You can do even more damage with this creature. You have to notice one thing, is this creature is normal. Okay, that's its rarity. It's the top right where it says, top right of your screen where it says King Varon. All the way to the right, it has an N. There are four levels of rarity. They are as follow. Normal, strange, rare, and extra. Extra is actually known as extra rare, but they, they dropped the rare some years ago, but it's basically extra. You can only have two actual extra cards in your book. Those are Evo Dragons. Other than that, the other extra cards you technically can't just put in your book. They are either special transformation or special summoning requirements. Okay, but this thing hits hard. 60 strength, right off the bat. Ouch. Next creature we have. Little Mushu. Um, it's a 40 strength, 50 HP creature. You have to have a fire territory already. And it has an ability called Synergy. In my opinion, they used the wrong word. If they would have kept Evo Dragons as what... They were called in Japan, which is uh, breed. They could have used um, eco for this ability for ecosystem. When you see synergy in play, you immediately think synergy means because it says synergy earth. You immediately would think, okay, Synergy Earth means I have to have an Earth creature in play for this to link with it. What Synergy actually means is there has to be an Earth creature in play in general. If there's a, if the enemy has an Earth creature in play, Little Mushu is going to get a, a boost. And its boost is plus 20 strength, plus 10 HP, and it will critical hit any fire or earth creatures. It's like, holy crap. But yeah, I think if, like I said, if they would have stuck with Breed, instead of calling this thing Synergy, they could, they could have called it Eco. Because you would think Synergy means that it links with your book, it links with your cards in play. It actually links with all creatures in play. So you don't have to have an Earth creature in play, the enemy could. And you're gonna get that boost. I'm just watching the, the frames randomly drop. Now we're up to 350. I... 
this is not looking good. Uh, the last fire creature we have is Shield Maiden. Not a bad creature. 40 strength, 40 HP, and it's vigorous. Remember, it means it doesn't stand down. But that would, what it also means is if a creature has vigorous, and let's say it has a, a secret art, you can use that secret art every turn. Because the creature doesn't, quote unquote, tap or stand down, so you don't have to worry about waiting for it to stand up again to use its ability or to level up the land. Um, vigorous creatures are great, like if you had, if you were using this with Old Willow, you could level her land up, let's say three or four, and then on any turn that you decided, you'd say, you know what, instead of leveling it up, I'm going to swap it out for Old Willow. And in one fell swoop, you can have this thing leveled up to three to five, and then the next turn, put an Old Willow down. Whereas normally you would have to go around a lap, uh, stand everything up, make sure everything's not fatigued, level up the lap, then you'd have to do it again. So that's how vigorous creatures are super vital to a bunch of books. So the first earth creature we have is Dryad. Dryad is one of those supports with a restriction. It can only use neutral. Fire and Earth. Thankfully, those are the three creature types in this book. The Dryad can use any of them. She also has a secret ability. And it's built into her movement system. She can literally move to any vacant Earth land. For instance, let's say you had Death Scythe on a level 3 Earth land and somebody used Magic Bolt. Well, remember, Death Scythe only has 10 HP. So the 20 strength, or the, the 20, yeah, the 20 strength damage from the magic bolt will kill it. Well, if you wanted to, you could move Dryad to that vacant earth land. So if you had a creature on like a decent earth land and it got destroyed or removed somehow, you could just put her right on it. Next creature we have is another support earth creature. It's support all. It's immune to destroy items and steal item effects, and it's scroll critical hit. Meaning, if you were to use a scroll on this creature, like Spark Ball or a Bolt, um, it would automatically become a critical scroll hit. So if the scroll was going to do 40 damage, it's going to do 60. And the final creature we have is the last support creature, the last support all, is Woodfolk. Not really much to say about it, it's a pretty decent support creature though. 30 strength, 40 HP, yeah you can't use items, but I mean with 30 strength you can slap on a death scythe and now you're hitting for a hundred. Um, also no Dryad is the only one of these that actually has a land restriction. I don't think any support has that, no. She has a land restriction, she can't be summoned onto air. Alright, now let's look at the items. We have two Angry Masks. Angry Masks are actually pretty evil. HP goes up 30, and at the end of battle, the opponent's HP gets minus by how much damage your creature received. Meaning... Okay, so it's adding 30 HP. Right, so let's say you put that on uh, Bushu here. That's what I call it. I like the little nickname. Uh, so its HP would be 80. Let's say they did 70 damage. Well, your opponent is now going to take minus 70 HP. Or, if you put Angry Mask, like let's say your opponent has King Varan out. Or as Firebeak or any strong creature, and you hit it with something like Trojan Horse. Now, no, Trojan Horse has zero strength, and it can use tools. It can't use weapon, armor, or scrolls. It could use tools, and tools are denoted by how it says item and it shows a ring. That means it's a tool. So, Trojan Horse can do it. And. 
let's say your HP. Let's say how much, what's its HP? Its HP is 30. So let's say they were going to hit you for 50. Right? You can remove 50 from their base HP. So if their base HP was only 50 or under, they're instant dead. And you take the land. I mean, the better thing would be actually put that on something with a strength, like King Varon. So if your opponent has first strike, and you put Angry Mask on King Varon, right, so he's gonna have 80 HP, he's gonna hit for 60, and let's say your opponent, like I said, let's say your opponent did 50 damage. But you're gonna hit for 60, then your opponent's gonna take 50 damage to the core HP. More than likely, you're gonna kill the creature. The next item we have is Battering Ram. Your strength goes up 30, and it's an instant death to any defensive creature. 100%. Yeah, Angry Mask is, is incredibly useful. Uh, a lot of people don't really notice I guess that minus because it ignores the land bonus it's basically hitting your your creatures core HP so let's say I do 50 damage or let's say King Warren does 60 to me and my creature had you know 70 HP or whatever just the ability from angry mask would kill King Varon instantly because it's taking it away from its base HP. It, it ignores that land bonus. The thing is incredibly powerful. It's not even funny. Battering Ram is actually a really great card against defensive creatures, or if you can make them defensive. There's an earth creature called Cockatrice, where upon hitting an enemy, instantly turns it into Wall of Stone. After that, Battering Ram states that there's 100% instant death against defensive creatures. Wall of Stone is defensive. That's a really great combo. The only way to get around that is to either 100% reflected damage or 100% neutralize it. But otherwise, if, if even one point of damage hits the creature, even if it hits that buffer zone like I was talking about, because it actually hit the creature, the defensive creature is instant dead. Next item we have is Diamond Armor. One of the only few creatures and or items that state attack last. Uh, I think there's actually only two creatures and one item. I think King Tortoise is one of the creatures, I don't remember the other. But Diamond Armor, Strength minus 30, HP plus 60. It's hard to get around that. Uh, you have Magma Shield. One of the best shield items for Earth and Fire creatures. If you equip it, if you equip it onto an Earth or Fire, it 100% neutralizes non-scroll attacks. So if somebody were to attack you with anything that wasn't a scroll, or if somebody were to try to hit you with their own version of Battering Ram, you neutralize that 100%. There's another item uh, called Storm Shield, which does the same thing for if you equip it on an Earth or Air creature. And there's Sphere Shield, which also does neutralizes of non-scroll attacks. Uh, the next item we have is Sword of Pluck. Sword of Pluck is probably one of the best weapon cards in this game. If, if you're using normal rarity creatures. Your strength of your creature goes up by 40, and then it critical hits if the creature that you're using this with is a normal creature. Now remember, I was talking about King Varon. He's normal. 60 strength plus to 40 is 100, which will then critical hit for an additional 50. 
Jutsu, one creature like King Varon will hit for 150 damage. If your opponent can't neutralize normal when you're attacking, it's almost certain death. The creature would have to be on a level 5 matching element land, have max maximum HP of 100, and then use an item just to survive. There's a lot of setup just to survive an attack from this. Uh, that can't use it. You know, even Tro even Steam Gear is going to do quite a bit. It's going to do 90 plus 45? So now you're looking at 135 for uh, 50 strength. A great combo for this is the air creature Centaur. Centaur attacks first, and it only has 30 strength. So this will only be 70. And after the critical, that's 105 attack. And then Centaur's ability kicks in, which would reshuffle Sword of Pluck back into your book. Uh, if you have Centaur and you have Sword of Pluck, put them in your book. Because Centaur attacks first, you can have the attack advantage on defense, probably kill the attacker. Because, yeah, I mean, even even 30 strength creature do 105 damage if it's normal with Sword of Pluck. Sword of Pluck is literally one of my favorite weapon cards. As long as your creature is neutral, it's gonna do some damage. You know, Fire Beak can actually use it. Even though it's rare and it's not going to get the critical, it's going to do 90 damage. Um, let's see. Bow Al will technically do uh, 120 damage. Oh no, sorry. Um, Bow Al will do uh, the same 135, I think. I mean, it's a really great weapon. The next weapon we have is Trident. It's actually pretty decent. Even if you're on defense, like let's say you know that the opponent can't do too much damage to your creature. Like, maybe the opponent can't kill it. But you can't kill theirs. Slap Trident on, give yourself an additional 20 HP, Hit them for 40 extra damage. Uh, that'll be also great with other creatures, too. Because, I mean, it is another 40 strength attack. And the last item we have is Wonder Charm. Uh, it neutralizes 80% of damage received from normal attacks. Any creature that has an attack bonus, like Cockatrice turning into Wall of Stone, will turn your creature into Wall of Stone because it neutralizes only 80%, which means 20% is going through. So even if that was one point of damage, you're still going to get transformed. Not a bad card, though. I mean, really, when you think about it, 80% of damage. That means if somebody were to hit you for 100, you're only taking 20. I mean, <laughs> That is pretty good. If you can't fully neutralize it, neutralize most. Uh, on to spells. We have Gift. Probably one of the best drawing slash mana gaining cards. Yes, you could get mana. Well, not really get mana, but you can use the mana card. Where you gain mana per lap. But Gift works on a ranking system. Meaning, pay 100 magic, and then let's say you're in first place. But so you're gonna gain 50 magic and you draw one card. But if you're in second place, you're gonna gain 100 magic, so you're getting your magic back, which makes it a free card, and you draw two cards. 
because you gain 50 magic and you draw one card based on what your rank is. So if in a four player game you were in fourth place, you would gain 200 magic and you would draw four cards. Gift is by far, or not gift, yeah, gift, sorry. Let's think of something else. Gift is by far better than the mana card. Yeah, it it costs quite a bit. It costs 100, mana's free. But mana, you have to make laps to start gaining anything decent. With gift, not only are you gaining mana, you're also drawing cards, in my opinion. Drawing cards outweighs gaining an extra 50 mana. Okay, the next card we have is Haste. I will always say to use Haste over Fly. Fly sucks in this game. <laughs> if you want proof, look at the look at my my Kelpie book highlight. I think it might have been the third match. In that god, the, the fly sucks. I don't remember when it was. It was either first, second, or third. But oof. haste is way better. Uh, you draw or you roll six to eight for the next. Um, die roll. It used to be, I think, two turns, now it's just one, but if you're within six to eight, like if you know if you roll six, seven, or eight, you won't land on anything big, or you might win in those movements, always, always, always use haste. Fly is just garbage. Next card we have is Holy Word 8. Uh, Holy Word 8 is kind of expensive, but Fly is, or Haste is kind of expensive too at 70. But Holy Word 8 costs 80. But your next die roll, or anybody's die roll really, if you can use it on your opponent, will automatically be 8. That makes things rather interesting. You can skip a lot of spaces right off the bat. Okay. Fly does technically add more probability to rolling more than six. I think the normal two die roll, the probability, um, or percentage I should say, is 5.6 roughly of what your die roll would be. That's an average. Fly does increase that. But if you were to roll two dice in Revolt, and get the scepter symbol, you move 12. If you were to roll three dice and get all three be the scepter symbol in fly, you move 12. In my opinion, I don't think they coded the third die. I think the way it's set up is the scepter symbol is a zero. And it's probably an if statement in the code that says, if 0, 0, move 12, or roll equals 12, or however they coded that. I think when they did fly, they literally did, if 2 die equals 0, if 2 scepters equals 0, then it's 0. And if 1 is 0, after that, it's also 0. I think they forgot to code three dice equals uh, 18. That is why you never want to use dice, or never want to use it. Because you're paying quite a bit to essentially move the same in the end. And the AI actually had Fly roll three scepter symbols, and it only moved 12. And it was in my, my last highlight in the, the Kelpie book. Fly is just garbage. I, I honestly think they forgot to code it properly. They probably coded Fly first, but then forgot. That's probably what happened. They probably went, eh, you know what, we'll just, 
Or maybe they just changed all die roll instead of if, you know, 0, 0 equal 12. Well, they probably <laughs> just added an extra 0 on accident. But yeah, fly is just, is it's just garbage. Never use fly in this game. It's not worth it. Next card you have is Magical Leap. There's another card similar to this called Escape. Magical Leap is ten times better. Escape only lets you literally escape to a vacant land. Magical Leap lets you transport um, yourself to any territory that's nearby within one to four spaces. So, if... Here's a great example, Kelpie and Old Willow. Let's say you are one turn away from running into a Kelpie. Like, it is literally one to three spaces away from you. You can Magical Leap over Kelpie. Or over Old Willow. You can Magical Leap over an enemy's level five or four or three, whatever. Whatever they might have, you can Magical Leap right past it. You can also Magical Leap yourself onto a gate if you know you're going to win the game. Like, if they put Old Willow or a Kelpie right before the gate, and you know, crap, if I land on it, I'm going to lose the game, you can just Magical Leap right over. And then, you can't roll your die this turn, which is essentially, um, makes it Holy Word Zero, like in previous cul de -Sep games, which means if you land on the gate, the game will count it as you literally landing on the gate. Because usually you have to land on the gate or pass the gate for it to count. Well, if for some reason you get on the gate or land on the gate via spell, you know, you can hurt, like in Saga, you can hurt someone. There's a card called Word of Recall, where you can send any scepter to the castle. Think of it like the, like the gate. If you sent yourself on your own turn to the castle, you literally will lap, and if you had enough mana, you win the game. Let's say your opponent, if they land on the castle, they win the game. If you were to use Word of Recall to send them onto the gate, at the beginning of their next turn, they don't win. Because the game won't count that as landing. That's why this card is really great. Because it literally works like uh, Holy Word Zero, which is no longer around. Which is probably a good thing, because that'd be pretty mean. Because you can have, you know, somebody land on the level the four creatures that they can't take on then make them stay there with Holy Word Zero. Next card you have is Metamorphosis. Pay 80 mana, discard a card, and you select an item or spell card from target enemy scepter's hand, and change all copies of the selected card in all scepter's hands and books to Holy Word 6. Meaning, if you had, like, let's say I did not like Sword of Pluck, I was going against it, and I had a book that didn't have Sword of Pluck, so I didn't care. I could take your Sword of Pluck, change that into Holy Word 6, and then it's going to change all Sword of Plucks in everybody's book and hand into Holy Word 6. The only way you can fix that is if you have the card Revival which reverts the book back to its beginning state. So what that means is, if you went through all of your spells or all of your items or they got destroyed or changed in this case, you can literally put them all back to their original state. That's the only way to survive that metamorphosis if they destroyed something good. Like if they destroyed all magma shields. I would have to have Revival to return that 
from Holy Word 6 back into Magma Shield. Next item you have is Shatter. Not a bad card. Uh, you select an item or spell card from target enemy Scepter's hand and you destroy it. You see a nasty item or spell or hell, you see Metamorphosis coming, you can destroy it. The final spell card we have is Wind of Hope. Uh, kind of like Gift, but it only costs 40, and you draw two cards. So we are going to see this book in action. Again, this book is called Beginner Magma Support. Let us remove Jen. Who are we going to put? Um, sure, let's put Tenet on on a random map. I think I'm using working. Yep. All right, and let's see how we do. It's your turn. Okay, this map is kind of confusing. So there are map switches. There are magic traps. And the only freaking gate is at the way bottom. RIP. Okay, we have a Bal Al, King Varon, Sage, and two Shadow Geist in my hand. Um. Actually, I want to go this way. Because I was not going to have anything hurt me just yet. I'm going to put... Who? what am I going to put? Just so I can have Bal Al. I'll put King Varon down. I put it on a transformation or morph tile. Ooh, Giant Nautilus. Not bad. Alright, I'm gonna put Sage down here, protect it, to protect that little area. Let's see what happens next. Yeah, Tenet just went around just so it could hit, or he can hit the, uh, the north gate. That's fine. Give myself haste. I'm actually going to put Shadow Geist here, and then let him go. You're using Petrify. Okay, so he technically got 50 magic from my enchantment, even though my enchantment was going away anyway. Great. Oh well, looks like I'm, looks like I'm losing magic. I'm gonna go put down a little Mushu here. So in battle, Mushu is automatically crap. It switched again. Uh, in battle, Mushu will get the synergy boost. Oh wait, Zal mute, you are here. Um, let me continue on with this move. All right. Creatures are no longer fatigued. Good to go. Um, let me level this up. Ooh, yeah, let's go level three. But Zalmute, you are here. Uh, do you need a DLC code? Huh. What's the matter? You don't want to attack it? Because... Shite. Looks like I'm hitting this again.
I'm not gonna put anything down. Oh, you do indeed. After this match, I will be giving away a code. I'm assuming you're probably the only one really active in chat and or here. So knowing anything, you'll probably be the one getting it. Alright. I keep paying so much to these damn things. Alright, if I don't get rid of something, I'm gonna have to literally get rid of something. I'm gonna get rid of the trident spear. Little, goodbye, little trident. But yeah, once this match is over, I'll be giving away... Uh, are you US or EU? Alright, let's draw two cards and see what we get. That's the only thing I'm going to need to know is if you're US or EU, because I have codes for both. Crap, I didn't get the back. Alright, but I can put down Shield Maiden. I'm going to have to get rid of something. Um, goodbye, Diamond Armor. <laughs> Rip. Nice. Alright, put down a little thunder spawn. Oh, let me attack one of his creatures. That is a knight. What does Tenet have? Do you have diamond armor? I want to attack you! Discard but I cannot attack you. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of Bow Wow. Because I do currently- oh! Landed on that. Oh, you can't even attack me anyway. <laughs> My lands grow ever stronger. I want to hit him with bandit- Discard your cards. It's your turn. Oh, come on. Oh, ooh. <laughs> what is this thunder spawn? This thunder spawn- 50 HP, it can be up to 90. I can take you. Right? Oh, sure. You could... I'm gonna steal your magic at the same time. You have to love Bandit, because Bandit plus Death Scythe... You can't block anything, right? Um, is the Thunder Spawn? No. Uh, Bandit plus Death Scythe will be 90 HP. <laughs> Whoa, wait. I miscalculated! I, I miscalculated? Because, uh, I'm just an idiot? <laughs> I forgot that Diamond is, what, 60? Which is kind of funny because... Actually, wait, the opponent does not have any well, armor. Ooh, I lost a hell of a lot of mana from that. Damn! I lost 170 magic in one shot. Yeah, these magic traps are just... They're just a nightmare. Uh... Let's make that level 4. Yeah, if you're an idiot like me, and you... kind of hit the wrong thing, 
Oh no! Like that? I didn't want to get rid of Bandit. Oh god. I I tapped okay way too early. The final game awaits you. Choose your path. My lands grow ever stronger. It's your turn. Oh, Do you have armor? You do not. I am purposely landing on your knight. Give me! Critical hits and penetrates water and earth. Or water and air. I will get my revenge. I don't feel like anything right now. That was pretty bad on my part. You use Ray and Wall. What did you destroy? Oh, King Warren is over a hundred. On your next journey. Is he? I didn't even look at that. Where would you land? What do you have in your hand? You don't have anything. What are you? Your HP is 80, but I can penetrate you with this. So I would have to do how much? I'd have to do 50. Don't have enough to take you out. What I do, what I, okay, so this is this is good for me actually. Good luck on is your I can put yieldy Trojan horse here, and the next time that I can make my creature stand up, or be not fatigued, I can actually attack his mummy. So if I can get something with 50 strength or more, it's not going to be looking so good for him. Uh, if you think I'm going to lose more magic, then... You're pretty stupid. Alright, let's put Triad down. The final gate awaits you. Are you gonna attack? Oh. What I can do is make him move a lot of places. Putting Holy Word 8 on him, he won't want to hit that magic trap, and if he does, he's pretty screwed. I still can't move you. Um... Try and change that to Earth. Build up the Earth chain a little. See what he does. Because if he actually does hit the magic trap, he's pretty stupid. My land 
Alright, so Tenet is actually almost in first. Oops! Alright, cool. I can actually attack his... ...mummy right now, and I don't think he has an item. Crap, he does have diamond armor now. Can his mummy use armor? Mummy cannot. Wait, that's me. I want to know what this is. Mummy can use armor. But I could technically force him to use... I will give you 30 attack. Double zero equals twelve. Triple zero equals twelve. That makes no sense, game. Good luck on your next Oof. journey. He lost a lot of mana. I'm not doing very well at all. Your HP, your HP is 30, your HP is also 30. Sure, I'll put you up to level 3. What am I discarding? I will discard Wonder Charm. Wonder Charm only neutralizes 80% anyway. Hmm. I kept my Holy Word 8, so I could force him to move 8. This, this is... Is Mummy defensive? Mummy's defensive. Okay, uh, I'm gonna make you... First I'm gonna make... Tenant move 8. So this way if Tenant decides, Tenant's gonna lose more magic. Take a chance. This could probably wind up killing me. So yes, his diamond armor will activate, which I'm glad because I actually made him use it. I'm gonna critical hit. And it'll penetrate, so it's not too bad. So even though I'm paying Tolfi that turn, next time I try that, he will be dead. Oh, let's see fly in action. He overrode, or yeah, my Holy Word 8. Oh, he made a move 12, which made him pay mana. Not the brightest move in the world, but okay. Wait, so now he has no armor. Angel Cape, Angel Cape. Angel Cape is armor, though. Thankfully, this but mummy can use armor. But mummy's also defensive. So, if I can land on it, 
I can kill it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to exchange it with Shadow Geist. Shadow Geist is vigorous. I'm going to get rid of a Trojan Horse, so that means next turn I can move Shadow Geist right onto uh, the mummy and take his land. Will he land on this magic trap? Okay. He decided that landing on the magic trap was a great idea. Wait, what does Angel Cap do before I commit myself to that attack? Oh, technically Angel Cape. It's in, oh, it's just immune to destroy item and steal effects. See, I use my own freaking Discord bot too to give me card information. Uh -huh. I'm not losing my mana. Oh, but I really need to. So it can go up 40 HP. What is this? So this is 60 HP. Eh. Eh. Fine. Territory. Ooh. Mummy! Uh, hold on. Battering Ram. So yeah, he gains 200 magic from that, but it's dead. And sorry, thank you very much for the follow. His magic dropped. Unfortunately, I'm not doing really well. Not at all. My lands grow ever stronger. It's your turn. No, 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 no. Don't will die. Six, it's a hundred freaking damage. Damn it. Actually, no, wait, it's not. Uh, with armor, that's only 70 HP. Because I can penetrate. Fortunately for him, I didn't land on it. I'm going to put my little vigorous shield maiden here. Let's see what he does. So what I, what I think is funny is he keeps leveling that one thing up, but it's actually not hard to take it out. Oh, it's gonna be even better now. Oh, that's right, he has the freaking thing. God dang it! Oh, thank you, I gain all the magic. We'll level that one up to level 4. And... I will get rid of Dryad. Even though I probably should have kept Dryad, but I, I wanted to keep the uh, Trojan Horse for Penetration. Oh wait, I can't select you, right? Because of your thing. Level you up. Alright, now I can get rid of a multitude of items. Seeing as how both 
Bal Al and Steam Gear have 50 strength, I will get rid of that. Yeah, I know, right? That's actually only the second time I've ever obtained that. Usually it's like me pumping in massive quantities of mana. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, so I can magical leap myself. Wait, is your barrier still on? Actually, you know what's funny is I'm actually gonna win this game. Um, what do you have, Tenet? You do have Angel Cape, which is 40 HP. Um, Thunder Spawn will have 75 HP. Fire Beak will kill you. Yeah, I don't need an item. This thing penetrates and uh, does critical hit. Which means my mana, yep, now I'm in the lead and next turn I will magical leap onto the gate. So I will get rid of I want to keep the armor. I'll just give her a charge and horse, I really don't need it. Now he will get a level 2 air land, but that's okay. And this is one of the greatest things about Magical Leap. Um, never use Magical Leap right before you're about to lap, unless you're going to win the match. Like, if you know if you Magical Leap on the gate, do it. Most of the time, you use Magical Leap now, after you pass the gate, so you can land back on it. Hey! <sighs> this book is not bad. We will do it again. Alright. Let me put Tenet's Handicap on level 1 now and keep the same random um back, so I have no clue what the next thing will be. I'll have no clue what the next map will be. You know, I've actually never done this. Um... Hmm. Okay, there... Okay, we are going to do one of two giveaways, because after the next map I'm probably going to give another one away. Um, all you have to do is just type raffle. Oh, exclamation point, raffle. 
to enter the giveaway for the Revolt DLC code. And again, after the next map, I'll probably be giving away the code to the... To, I'll probably be giving away another code to the other person. There's actually two people here. So, right now, the giveaway is open. All you have to do is just type exclamation point raffle, and uh, we'll be giving away one Revolt DLC sign-up code. It comes equipped with a custom quest. Um, you also get a new map, and you also get a book cover as well. This will be quick because <laughs> there's only two people. I will let this go for the next, let's say, 30, 60 seconds. But yeah, you get, um, you get a quest with Zonks. I believe it's 70,000 mana is the total mana needed. You get a new map and you get the, um, book cover. It's actually not a bad book cover. Actually, you know what we can do? I can tell you the handicap limits. In case you don't know what the handicap limits are. Handicap limits actually make the opponent harder to beat. There are 10 limits. From handicap 1 to handicap 10. Handicap 1 gives tenant 50% toll bonus. 2 is 25% lap bonus. 3 randomly places 3 statues on the board in any location. Uh, four will give an enemy plus 50% toll fees and two halflings in any location or any, in, in any land. Handicap five is 25% lap bonus, 25% tolls, um, a flow ghostin, one aqualing, one scoreen, and one blitz raven. Handicap six is 25% lap bonus, 50% tolls, and two great fossils. Handicap 7 is 50-50. 50% toll and lap, and one ogre of each element. That is red, blue, uh, green, and yellow. Handicap 8 is 50% uh, lap bonus and 75% toll bonus. And two shield maidens and two pixies. Uh, handicap 9 is 75% and 100%. 75% toll and 100% lap bonus. Two Echinoderms and two Great Nimbus. The final handicap is the worst. It's handicap level 10. It is 100% toll bonus, 100% lap bonus, and one lord of each element. Meaning, that's four lords. If the... If you have... If you're going against two AI, or three AI, let's say it's a four-player match, and you give each AI, AI handicap 10, there will be 12 lords in play. Damn. Okay, we will close the giveaway. We have two entries. Let us pick one of the winners right now. Hello, get... Uh Hello, Ankbot. There we go. And Zalmiel. Sweet. It was a 50 50 shot, really. <laughs> okay. Uh. Now you said you are US, correct? want to make sure so I don't screw that up. Let me just do a test. I never actually done Whisper from Inkbot. Let me see if this actually works. Did you actually get that Whisper? 
need to make sure. Oh, you did? Or... Send this to you via whisper. What got dropped? Frames, you're doing it again. No, I just I just did a test whisper. I didn't know if All right, let me actually send you a message then. Um Alright, I guess I have to do this to freaking... Okay, Ankbot, I get it. Huh. No, no. God dang it, Twitch, you're bothering me. Technology, it hates me today. Okay. Yeah, I probably did. For a moment. Um, did you get the whisper I sent you, the test one? I'm gonna have to send this via actual message. It's been so long. this code in about 30 seconds. That's the problem when you have codes on one computer, on the computer you're streaming, and the computer you actually have Twitch open, it doesn't have them. <laughs> for this now. So now you should actually have the US code. <laughs> it has been sent via Whisper. Uh, it... I don't think you can check them on mobile, which kind of sucks.
Otherwise, I could probably send it I hate how Twitch works sometimes. Um. I will send this as a Twitch message as well. So this is this has been sent via Twitch Whisper and as Twitch Message. In order to access your Twitch messages, you get to that from the top right. In order to get to your Twitch messages, you can access them on Twitch at the top right where it says your name. You can click on that and then click messages. And then it's also been sent via Twitch Whisper as well. Oh, bef hey, sorry. Um, where'd you go? Guessing, guessing your name is pronounced Sarioya. Man, I love butchering weird names. It's a great pastime. Since we've taken so long, eh, I'll send you a code too. I'm feeling rather generous. Until then, I will start the next match. And wait and see how things are going. Oh, wait, sorry there. Um, oh, it's already starting off with Barrier. Yeah, Barrier. Which lasts for five turns. Do you have... Don't have armor. Could technically take you out. Uh, are you US, EU? These are important information. You are US, okay. I have sent you a whisper as well for an uh, Revolt US DLC code. These codes, you have to go into the online shop on Revolt, and I believe it's something like enter product code. I think if you look at the online shop, there's the top two options, and then the two right below it. The bottom left one should be the code. And Zalmute got his code. There you go. Like I said, it comes with a quest. Uh, you get an extra map and you get a book cover as well. Right, so this thing hits for 50 damage. I could take it out. I could really take it out, actually. I could Trojan Horse and Bow Owl it. Luckily for it, I don't have to kill it. Just yet. I'm gonna put, um... I'm gonna put Shadow Guys here. So yeah, sorry, I sent you... 
like I said, I sent you a Twitch Whisper as well, which contains the code. You put it in the online shop inside Revolt itself. Oh, snap! Tenant, what do you have? You have armor. You don't have armor. Your knight is dead. Um... Actually, wait, I think I have to use this. I only have to do 40 damage. I could technically hit you and steal your mana at the same time. But I'd rather have a Trojan horse. I'd rather have the Trojan horse in play. <laughs> he literally rolled two zeros and a one. There we go. Uh, level three. Sure, I'll level it up. This map can actually hurt you pretty badly, so don't be surprised if I lose. This map, there's so many different ways you can go to get away from creatures, it's not even funny. But yes. Alright, let me... Let me write down at the... Uh, the I think I gave like six or seven codes away in the past 24 hours. This is actually good for one reason, though, is I'm gaining a lot of chains now for fire. Now there's two fire chains. Fortunately for me, Tenant has already lapped while I haven't, so I'm kind of slow right now. What else is kind of slow is this game right now. Only 40 frames per second. Not doing so good. It's like, for, for a fact, I know that Tenet's gonna go down to green, because there's no way he would voluntarily hit the Shadow Geist. Just kind of good, because he would have no attack. Are you defensive? Yes, you are. How much could you hit me for? You could hit me for 40. And Tenet, who actually has... Golden Ham, you would hit me for 80. Eesh. Let's try to not take it. I'm gonna exchange you for... Absolutely nothing. I will, however, get rid of... Um, one bandit. Because only doing 40 damage is not really going to help me.
Where would you land with eight? I'm gonna get rid of the Wonder Charm. Yeah, I figured you'd go down so that way you wouldn't hit Shield Maiden. Yeah, this map, yeah, there's just so many different ways you can go that unless you have everything planned out, Yeah, I'm gonna holy word eight myself. Eight. It makes things a lot easier. Well, on one really good hand. Uh, if I can attack some- oh wait, he just got rid of my King Varon. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, I could actually do some decent damage with Bandit now, but... Eh. Bandit kinda got destroyed. Yeah, this map is kind of ugly. This map sometimes is literally like whoever can have uh, more stronger lands down than other people. That's essentially what this comes down to. Um, I'll put Bandit here. Even though Bandit will technically give me HP, uh, Shadowgeist has first attack and turns creatures base strength to zero. So they would have to technically hit me with an item in order to do any damage. Then going north. Do you have armor? You do have angel cape. You do have diamond armor. Diamond armor is sixty. So this thing would be 110 HP, not including the 30 HP boost. Not looking so good for me. really good. What do I have? What can I put down? What can I put down? I could put down 
Bal L. I can put down steam gear. Ah, uh, there's so much to put down. I don't know what to do. Actually rolled the one onto fire. Interesting. Kind of shocked about that. Too bad I can't like magical leap you onto my property. The reason why I put down steam gear is I did not want Bal Al in play because Bal Al will make you destroy random card from your hand. I don't want to deal with that really. Um. You have 70 HP, um, you are not defensive. Tenant does have diamond armor and angel cape, so, phew, you'd have 130 HP. But I can level that up to level 4. Um, Technically, that could go with that, which would be 80 strength. Oh my god, there's so much. Um, uh, what do I get rid of? If I get rid of Angry Mask, I don't get the plus 30. I'll get rid of that. This this map is just... Although now, I probably should... Oh no. Didn't land on it, thankfully. And I do mean thankfully. Oh, no, Tenet doesn't have any creatures. Damn it! <laughs> Why couldn't you land it on it? But I don't have armor. I could technically kind of make armor. I will put down Dryad. Even though I'm technically in the lead, I'm not in the lead that well. Attack first, so I could Shadow Geist you, but <sighs> that ain't gonna do anything. We're going this way. Um, I'm really gonna hate to put him down there, but he will get a boost. I'm actually gonna get rid of. I'm actually gonna replace that with Shadow Geist and get rid of um, Wood Folk. Because now I have the Bandit combo. So I can do 70 HP, or I can do 70 strength and gain 140 magic from hitting any of his creatures. So that's one armor gone. Now, if you can only get rid of your diamond armor, I'd appreciate. Oh, never mind. If I can only get rid of your diamond armor, even though technically uh, something like the halo would be better, I just don't want you having armor. Period. Because now this dude's a little more manageable. Now he's 80, 80 HP. Um. 
I can't take it out just yet. Do I have attack first? No, I don't. I, I, I ain't going that way. Because I forgot his... Even though his thing is defensive down there, it also attacks first. Which I really don't want to land on. But if I can land on his big dude, I'd be close to hurting it if... Thing. Can I move you? Move you here. Get rid of this dryad. Here's the thing. If I can get Death Scythe, I can kill his creature. He has no armor. Um, you're going to attack, aren't you? Oof. Now it's 90 HP. Now the only way I really can kill it is with Death Scythe. And because it's defending, it's gonna do 50 damage. Um, it attacks first. Probably use an item. Not looking so good for me. I'm not landing that way. Fight me. This steam gear looks pretty nice. Wait, do you have any restrictions? No, you don't. So I can go... Level 3. This is not looking good. I'll get rid of one Magical Leap. Oh man, he has two Quintessence. That's how you quickly put somebody in second place. Damn! Quintessence really hurt. It's your turn. What, this wall? Tornado is defensive, but it attacks first. So, Battering Ram has to actually hit first in order to insta kill a defensive creature. And this dude also attacks first and is not defensive. So, um, the battering ram on tornado would technically kill it as long as I have a first attack creature in my hand. Like, this dude is just. Ugh. And it attacks first, and because it's defending, it's gonna be 50 attack. You also have to note that Tenet has two weapons, and will use it. Um, again, if I could, if I had attack first, I could take it out pretty easily. Let's pay quite a bit of mana. You're gonna do it again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, he attacks first, Bal Al attacks first. I could technically hit it with Bal Al. This Bal is Bal. Oh, Bal Al is normal. 
No. Territory. I can't exchange it. Shite. Um. I can technically kill it next turn ish. Bal Al vigorous. Bal Al is not. You are, but you are rare. It's like, I don't know which one to get rid of. I'm gonna keep Diamond Armor. I can actually kill his creature. Um... What are you hitting now? Which is gonna drop me even more- Damn, that Quintessence really sucks. I mean, thankfully for me, I can- I have enough mana, I can recover. Yes, he does not have armor. He has a golden hammer, he has a trident, but no actual armor. Let's go, game. Jesus. Oh, Death Scythe. Okay, so I cool, but she doesn't attack first. Damn it! Um, terrain change you to fire. Get some of my mana back. Um. Okay. By magical leap. Yeah. So this one does not look good for me. I'm probably gonna lose this. Not surprised. Territory. Exchange creature with Bow Owl. Bow Owl will technically destroy. Well, well, not yet anyway. Okay, so, uh, eesh. I'm gonna get rid of Bandit. Bow Owl next turn. I'd rather have that there. You'll see why. Um, Bow Owl is normal, and it attacks first. And because he's normal, he's gonna be doing quite a bit of damage. Because unless I'm stupid and I miss something here. Bao Al can use weapons, so Bao Al is normal at 50 strength. Um, it attacks first. Gargoyle is at 50 HP, he's at 90 HP, and he attacks first. So we wash each other out, and the rule of thumb is if no creatures have first attack, the attacker gains advantage. The attacker always goes first no matter what. So I would have to do 90 damage. And Tenant does not have any armor right now. He can attack with a weapon, but these weapons don't give him first attack. Because I have Sword of Pluck, Bao Al is going to hit him for 135 damage. So the next time I hit a gate. Next time I hit a gate, as long as he does not gain armor, I will attack him and kill his creature, which will drop his mana down considerably. Now again, Bao Al will destroy one item from my hand. Hopefully it does not destroy um, diamond armor. I can draw two cards to help me with that. Maybe increase my chances of not losing that card. Mm -hmm. 
are any cards in my hand for strike? Oh. Um, 60 HP, I'm gonna do 60 damage. Not gonna use any weapons. <laughs> oh wait, he goes up in HP. Shit. Never mind. On the bright side, he doesn't have the extra HP for uh, Gargoyle. Okay, we are gonna get rid of Triad. He has Barrier, which only protects himself. His level 4 or 5 Gargoyle will be dead next turn. Because all he has is Golden Hammer, which increases his strength by 40. Um, and in order for Golden Hammer's second ability to activate, own ability to activate, it has to survive. Golden Hammer states that if the creature you're attacking does not die for any reason, or maybe if you're defending, whatever, but if the opposing creature does not die for any reason, you gain 200 magic. Right, and the only reason why I'm drawing two cards is I want to make sure that I don't lose anything too good. Unfortunately, I drew freaking Fireman. Kinda wanna keep that. Oh, hopefully. Good. Oof, creature. You don't have armor, right? Yep. Oof creature, onto that. <laughs> Even without the boost. Hey! It only took Sage! Hallelujah! Yes, he is currently still in first place. And he landed on Shadow Geist, which is kind of funny. Pay up. Oof, sort of, but sort of pluck. That card will help you so much. It's not even funny. I'm gonna put King Varon down here. When I can, I'm going to exchange the uh, Bow Owl for Woodfolk, so, so I'm at least getting HP boost. Too bad I don't have another sword of pluck in my hand. Or, that'd be really nice. Hit him. Again. Uh, I'd have to do 90 HP. Uh, technically I could do it. Next turn. Next lap, I should say. I'll go this way. I can't change you yet. Nope. I will put, uh... Huh. I mean, this thing attacks first. It's like everything attacks first. Okay, I'll put Firebeak down only because I want to keep the bandit. Stealing. Let's see what he does. But yeah, I can actually take out his mummy. He still, again, does not have armor. 
Bummy's only 90 HP, so Bandit plus, um, ooh, Death Scythe is 90 Strength. Actually, I'm going to make sure I can win. Um, what do I have? Let's do it that way instead. That's even worse. Damn. So somehow I'm actually in the lead. Okay, he's only gonna move one space. And that's the end of the game. You are the winner of this war. Okay. But yeah, that 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 Quint Banish combo. Quintessentions with um with Banish ooh, with the, what is it, Holy Banishment? The one? That combo is really nasty. The true but even Quintessentions Quintessentions. I forget what the card is called already. First. I came in forced. Uh, that card is just... Oof. You can really hurt someone. He won, somehow. GP that I don't need. But yeah, uh, let me go back to the... Look, this, like I said, is the mag the beginning magma support book. This is a book you can use for the multiplayer, for the beginner lobby, because all of the cards in here are obtained early. Um, that's like that's the free bets logo. Um, that's the kind of thing. That's the drifter. Then you have, uh, what are the three? I have all my notes and everything. I actually have all the block information too. That's, um, starter book, in darkness block, and drifter block. Those are the three beginner blocks, and those are the three blocks you can use in beginner. And this book is called, like I said, beginner magma support. <laughs> There's... A lot of great potential in this book. This book was is basically, like I said, designed just for a beginner book. But you can run with this. You can go wild with this. Um, personally, I would ditch. Uh, okay. So personally, I would try to gain more magic shields or magma shields, and probably maga or probably magic shields. Because magic shields protect, uh, neutralize scroll. Um, Metamorphosis, I never really used it in the two matches. It's not, it's a great card. Uh, I think it can be, we can do a lot better. Personally, I would get rid of Storm Gear. Bow Al. Um, Let's see. I would add more Sword of Plucks. Add more Magma Shields. Uh, get rid of the Trident. Get rid of Wonder Charm. I would probably get rid of Diamond Armor. And add just regular old Scale Armor. Um... But yeah, Magma Shield will help you out. You have a lot of already N rarity cards. Bal Al does come in handy because it is 50 strength, but uh, there's actually an Earth creature that I think is 10 times better. And here he is. This is Great Tusker. He neutralizes attack attacks first creatures. 
So, like the person's gargoyle in play, if you were to attack with this and sort of pluck, this thing neutralizes any creature's attack first ability. So that means you attack first and you're going to hit for 150. Because it's going to critical hit, because Great Tusker is normal with sort of pluck. If, a, if somebody uses an attack first item, Great Tusker cannot uh, neutralize that. Great Tusker only neutralizes creatures with attacks first. So that's something you have to know. If a creature, or if an enemy has an attack first item in their hand, uh, Great Tusker will not neutralize that. But Great Tusker plus Sword of Pluck is a really great combo that people use, and I think is more impactful than Balal. Balal does attack first, but Great Tusker kills that. So the first attack is washed. Then you hit them with Sword of Pluck, and that's where Great Tusker comes in even more advantage. Bal Owl will hit for 135, and Great Tusker will hit for 150. So, Great Tusker is far better in this book, in my opinion. But like I said, this book is a beginner book to get people to know the basics of support books and magma support books in general. Run with this. Um, for instance, if you were to attack with Shadowgeist, and the attack bonus is opponent strength is zero, you can't use this in beginner, but if you ever get uh, this creature, which I think comes from the last booster pack, uh, Sleeping Gods, this is Lunatic Hair. At the battle end, the opponent's strength and HP values are swapped. So, with Shadowgeist, or with an item on Lunatic Hair called Ring of Succubus, they will turn the creature's strength to zero, and then when you hit with Lunatic Hair, at the end of battle, it swaps it. And it only, just to let you know again, when it says strength equals zero, that's base strength. So if an enemy uses an item, like sword of pluck and it gives it plus 40 strength it's gonna hit for 40 strength okay just note that when it when it puts a creature's attack to zero that's just for creature not for the item uh, and the ring is all the way down here oh went past it uh, this is Ring of Succubus. Actually, I'm incorrect. That is one of the first three uh, sets. First three blocks. Attack first, and the... So this one actually gives you attack first. So... That's also, like, off the bat, nice. Right, so this gives you attack first, and it's bonus. Like I said, it makes the opponent's strength zero. So let's say your opponent has no weapon and you hit them with lunatic hair. You can ring them at the same turn to make their strength zero. You attack first, then since they can't attack you, the battle's over, their HP and their strength swap. Creature has zero HP, creature dies, you own the land. How can you get around items like that? It's kind of relatively easy. This card is really good. Uh, if you ever get this card, think about using it. Necroscarab. Upon defeat, you transform into a skeleton. Let's say you put you have level four or five creature, and if your opponent pays that toll fee that on your next turn, if you hit the gate, and let's say you're one square away from hitting the gate, or if you have Magical Leap, and 
you need to make sure your creature survives. If your creature can use a tool, and remember, uh, tools are other rings that you see on the right screen where it says Necroscarab item and it shows a ring, and that's a tool. If your creature can use a tool, put this on there. Because if they kill your creature, your creature will, will transform into a skeleton and you still technically own the land and they have to pay. Necroscarab is really great at saying, I laugh at you. And I have used that against the AI and it in, in Saga and it is nasty. I forgot what they killed, but they killed something on a level 5 or 4 land. If if I didn't use Necroscarab, I would have lost the game. But because I put it in there, my creature died, became a skeleton. I was like, haha. Sucker. But yeah, those those are, you know, certain cards that can help you in a lot of books. And again, this one is Magma. Uh, this one's Beginner Magma Support. Now, if you use Google Translate, this book is actually called Beginner Fire Aid because Google Translate's not that great. Uh, this book was actually posted probably about a year ago in June uh, on a website titled Book2PNG. Japanese website where you can put together whatever book you want and then pump it out via a ping. As you can see in the, the, the picture, you know, it says Shadow Guys 3, uh, Gear 2, Trojan Horse 2, Bandit 3. That is all from the site. Unfortunately, it's only in Japanese. And I'm going to be showing off a lot of books from Japanese players. You're going to be seeing a lot. I technically have access to 700 and something book PNGs, so there's a lot of book guides coming for for Cult of Seth Revolt. You're also going to be seeing some books from my own creations coming. Um, I do have a Powder Eater book in mind. I also have a Powder Eater Goblin book in mind. You're going to be seeing a beginner-esque Old Willow Kelpie book that I use against the AI. That book, the Old Willow Kelpie book that I have used against the AI, got me to beating Quest 4 Mission 8, which is a pretty hard map. It's a pretty hard quest, to be honest. Um, I technically lost that the first time because I didn't plan it right. And I beat it the second time. It's still a long match, but my book held through. So I'm going to show off that book at, the, at how it works for the beginner. And that's one of the things you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of endgame books. You're going to see a lot of um, mid books and you're going to see a lot of early books. So with that, I'm actually going to be ending the stream. I want to first uh, thank Hell's Attack, Trioptical, Zalmute, and Sorry for the follow. Uh, Zalmute and Sorry, I hope you enjoy the uh, book cover. The book cover is actually pretty nice. The Soltis book cover. You also get the custom Zonks quest. I already forget what it's called. Uh, and you get a new map. <laughs> I do actually have a couple more codes to give away sometime in the future. I don't know if they're all, all going to be given away on stream or on various places because I gave two away when other people were streaming cul de -Sept yesterday. I gave a couple away on Discord. <laughs> I want more. 
I think what I should do is, uh, tomorrow when the Australian DLC codes go out for the last batch, we're gonna see if I can contact, um, Iponichi and see if I can get some, some codes to give away. Give me the codes! Because I, I forgot how many I gave away so far. I think... I think I gave away uh, eight codes in the past 24 hours. <laughs> I gave away quite a bit. Yeah, it's funny because I, I knew people who... We're gonna register with extra emails, and I'm like, just, just give me the codes. I'll, I'll give them all away. So yeah, I'm gonna see if I can contact Nipponichi. Uh, see if I can get some North American, EU, and Australian codes. I have one European code, one uh, more U.S. code, and. Tomorrow I'll be getting an Australian code. I am finally running out. But yeah, this is what you're going to be seeing a lot of on this channel. You're going to be seeing a lot of book guides and teaching cul-de-sept in general along with combos. By the way, in case you've never actually seen it, this battering ram, which does instant death, works beautifully with Cockatrice. Uh, its attack bonus is it transforms opponent into Wall of Stone. So it, as long as Cockatrice hits the opponent for more than zero points of damage, <laughs> if it hit it for even one point of damage, Cockatrice will turn the opponent into Wall of Stone. Then Battering Ram will say, okay, this creature is automatically defensive and kill it. I don't know what book we're going to be looking at next time, which is Friday. Um, I might show off my Old Willow Kelpie book as I have it right now. That's a pretty much, I believe, beginner book. I don't think anything was put in there from the rich packs. I think everything is essentially um, anything you can get from standard packs. Although, it will take a while. There might be a few cards from Rich Pack, but I don't know. I'll have to look. But again, thank you for the uh, follows. Thank you for the interactions. Have fun with the quest. I haven't done the quest, but I think it's, what, 70 or 90,000 for the total G? It would take a while. I mean, it's easy with some medium game books or end game books, that's not that hard. But with beginner books, ooh, that would take a long time. But if you have any questions or any comments, if you need help with Call of Sept in general, you can go to the Call of Sept Central Discord. And in that Discord, you can actually run my Culture Bot, which acts as a card database bot. Anytime you ever need information from cards 24-7, you can check for it in Discord by typing question mark and then a card name. So, question mark bandit. No space, just question mark bandit will give you the information on bandit. All of the stats for bandit, all of... Like, what you see on the right screen is what you would see. You would see, you know, its strength, its HP, element type, rarity type, uh, how much mana it costs, any abilities it might have. There are always people in the Discord, so if you ever have any questions or concerns, uh, if you need any help or book advice, people are always there and willing to help. If you ever want to see a book guide used, 
like on the video, you can actually send me the book in text form on Discord, and I will put it together and one day do a video guide for. So if there was a, a book you want to see how I might run it versus how you run it, or if there was a book you just wanted to know how it would work in general, I should be able to help you with that. With that, I will be back on Wednesday. Or Wednesday. Yeah, today's Wednesday, idiot. I will be back on Friday. Uh, like I said, probably with my beginner Kelpie Old Willow book guide. And until then, I hope you all have a great time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.